Hello and welcome everyone to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Edureka. Today we will learn about Apache Hive. Now let's quickly begin with our session for today. Apache Hive is one of the best open source software utilities which has SQL like interface that is used in data querying and data analytics. But before we get started, please subscribe to Edureka's YouTube channel to never miss an update on the trending IT technologies in the current year. Also, if you're looking for an online certification and training based on Hadoop and big data, then I have dropped down the link in the description box below. I hope you check out. Today, we will discuss more about Hadoop through the following agenda. Firstly, we shall understand why exactly we needed Apache Hive. Followed by that, we shall understand what is Apache Hive, then its important features, then comes the important stage where we will understand the Apache Hive architecture, the components involved in Apache Hive, then we will learn how to install Apache Hive in Windows operating system. Followed by that, we shall understand the data types, operators, data models which are present in Hive. Then we shall go through a brief demo of Apache Hive. So let's quickly begin with the first topic, that is, why exactly we needed Apache Hive. It all began in the early 90s when Facebook started. Slowly, the number of users at Facebook increased, that is, nearly 1 billion users, and along with the users, increased the data which is nearly equals to thousands of terabytes of data and nearly 1 lakh queries then also 500 million photographs uploaded daily and this was a huge amount of data that Facebook had to process and the first thing that everybody had in their mind was to use RDBMS and we all know that RDBMS couldn't handle such a huge amount of data and neither it was capable enough to process it and the very next big guy who was capable enough to handle all this big data was Hadoop. Even when Hadoop came into picture, it was not too easy to manage all the queries. It used to take a lot of time to execute all the queries performed. So one common thing that all the Hadoop developers had was the SQL. So they thought to come up with a new solution that has Hadoop's capacity and interface like SQL. That is when Hive came into picture. So now we understand the exact definition of Apache Hive. Apache Hive is a data warehouse software project built on top of Apache Hadoop for providing data query and data analysis. Hive gives a SQL like interface to query data stored in various databases and file systems that integrate with Hadoop. Also, Apache Hive has data warehousing software utility. It can be used for data analytics. It is built for SQL users manages querying of structured data and it simplifies and abstracts the load that is on Hadoop. And lastly, no need to learn Java and Hadoop API to handle data using Hive. So followed by this, we shall understand Apache Hive applications. Apache Hive is used in many major applications. Few of the major applications are as follows. Hive is a data warehousing infrastructure for Hadoop. The primary responsibility of Hive is to provide data summarization, query, and data analysis. It supports analysis of large datasets in Hadoop's HDFS as well as on Amazon S3 file system. Followed by that, we have document indexing with Hive. The goal of Hive indexing is to improve the speed of query lookup on certain columns of a table. Without an index, queries could load an entire table or partition a whole process as rows. This would be troublesome. So with Hive, we have solved this problem. Followed by that, predictive modeling. The data manager allows you to prepare your data so it can be processed in automated analytics. It offers a variety of preparation functionalities, including the creation of analytical records and timestamp populations. Followed by that, the next important application of Hive is business intelligence. Hive is a data warehousing component of Hadoop and it functions well with structured data, enabling ad hoc queries against large transactional datasets. Hence, it happens to be a best in class tool available for business intelligence and helps many companies to predict their business requirements with high accuracy. Last but not the least, log processing. Apache Hive is a data warehouse infrastructure built on top of Hadoop. It allows processing of data with SQL like queries and is very pluggable so that we can configure it to provide our logs quite easily. So these were the few important Hive applications. Now let us move ahead and understand Apache Hive features. The first and the foremost important feature of Apache Hive is SQL type queries. 
The SQL type queries present on Hive will help many of the Hadoop developers to write queries with ease. Followed by that, the next important feature of Apache Hive is OLAP based design. OLAP is nothing but online analytical processing. This allows users to analyze database information from multiple database systems at one time. So using Apache Hive, we can achieve OLAP with higher accuracy. Followed by the second feature, we have the third feature which says Apache Hive is really fast. Since we have SQL-like interface in Apache Hive, using this feature on HDFS will help us writing queries faster and executing them. Followed by that, we believe Apache Hive is highly scalable. Hive tables are defined directly in Hadoop file system. Hence, Hive is fast and scalable and easy to learn. Followed by that, it is known to be highly extensible. Apache Hive uses Hadoop file system and Hadoop file systems or HDFS provides horizontal extensibility. And finally, the ad hoc querying. Using Hive, we can execute ad hoc querying to analyze and predict data. So these were the few important features of Apache Hive. Let us move on to our next topic where we deal with Apache Hive architecture. The following architecture explains the flow of submission of query into Hive. The first stage is the Hive client. Hive allows writing applications in various languages including Java, Python and C++. It supports different types of clients such as Thrift Server, JDBC Driver and ODBC Driver. So what exactly is Thrift Server? It is a cross language service provider platform that serves the request from all these programming languages that supports Thrift. Followed by that, JDBC Driver. It is used to establish connection between Hive and Java applications. The JDBC driver is present in the class org.apache.hadoop.hive.jdbc.hive driver. Finally, we come to ODBC driver. So what exactly is ODBC driver? ODBC driver allows the applications that support ODBC protocol to connect to Hive. Followed by that, we have the Hive services. The following are the services provided by Hive. They are Hive CLI, Hive Web User Interface, Hive Metastore, Hive Server, Hive Driver, Hive Compiler, and lastly, the Hive Execution Engine. The Hive CLI or Command Line Interface is a shell where we can execute the Hive queries and commands. Followed by that, the Hive Web UI is just an alternative for Hive CLI. It provides a web based graphical user interface for executing Hive queries and commands. Followed by that, the Hive Metastore. It is a central repository that stores all the structured information of various tables and partitions in the warehouse. It also includes metadata of column and its type information, the serializers and deserializers, which is used to read and write data, and the corresponding HDFS files where the data is stored. Followed by that, the Hive server. It is referred to as Apache Thrift Server. It accepts the request from different clients and provides to the Hive driver. Moving on, we shall deal with Hive driver. The Hive driver receives queries from different sources such as Web UI, CLI, Thrift, and JDBC or ODBC drivers. It transfers the queries to the compiler. Followed by that, we have the Hive compiler. The purpose of Hive compiler is to pass the query and perform semantic analysis on the different query blocks and expressions. It converts Hive QL statements into MapReduce jobs. Finally, we have Hive Execution Engine. Hive Execution Engine is the optimizer that generates the logical plan in the form of DAG or Directed Acyclic Graph of MapReduce tasks and HDFS tasks. In the end, the Execution Engine executes the incoming task in the order of their dependencies. Followed by that, we have the MapReduce and HDFS. MapReduce is the processing layer which executes the mapping and reducing jobs on the data provided. Lastly, the HDFS or Hadoop Distributed File System is the location where the data which we provide is stored. So this is the architecture of Apache Hive. Then moving next, we have Apache Hive components. So what are the different components which are present in Hive? They are first one, the shell. Shell is the place where we write our queries and execute them. Followed by that, we have Metastore. As discussed in the architecture, 
The meta store is a place where all the details related to our tables is stored like schema, etc. Followed by that we have the execution engine. So execution engine is the component of Apache Hive which converts the query or the code which we have written into the language which the Hive can understand. Followed by that driver is the component which executes the code or query in the form of acyclic graphs. And lastly the compiler. Compiler compiles whatever the code we write and executes and provides us the output. So these are the major Hive components. Moving ahead, we shall understand Apache Hive installation on Windows operating system. So Edureka is all about providing the technical knowledge in the simplest way as possible and later play around with the technologies to understand the complicated parts of it. So now let's try to install Hive into our local system in the most simplest way as possible. To do so, we might need the Oracle VirtualBox which looks like this. So once after you download Oracle VirtualBox and install it into your local system, the next step would be to download the Cloudera Quick Start VM for your local system. The link to this will be provided in the description box below. Now let's quickly start our Cloudera Quick Start VM with our Oracle VirtualBox. Select import option and now provide the location where your Cloudera Quick Start VM is existing. In my local system, it is in the local disk drive F. There you go. Select open and now just make sure your RAM size is more than 8 GB. Just randomly I'm providing 9000 MB which is just above 8 GB so that you have a smooth functionality of Cloudera. Now select import and there you go. You can see that Cloudera quick start VM is getting imported. Now you can see that Cloudera Quick Start VM has been successfully imported and it's ready for deployment. You can just double click on it and it'll get started. You can see that Cloudera VM has been successfully imported and it started. And also you can see that we have gone live on Cloudera. You can see all the Hue, Hadoop, HBase, Impala, Spark, which are pre-installed in Cloudera. Now our concern would be to start up Hive. So to start Hive, you need to start up Hue first. So let me remind you one thing. In Cloudera, every single password and username is Cloudera by default. So for example, we have got Hue username and password here. So the username, that is the default username for Cloudera's Hue would be Cloudera. And along with that, even the password will be Cloudera. That is by default. So we have got Cloudera and Cloudera as username and password respectively. Let's just sign in. You may select remember option in case if you forget your passwords. So now we are getting connected to Hue and we are live on Hue now. There you go. We've got started our Hue. So now we'll enter into HDFS. There we go. We have our Hive here. Now that we have successfully installed Hive into our local system, let us move further and understand few more concepts in Hadoop. Firstly, we should deal with the data types. The data types are completely similar to any other programming language which we have. They are tiny int, small int, integer, big int. Similarly, followed by that we have float. And inside Hive, float is used for single precision. And if you want double precision, you can go ahead with double. And followed by that we have a string and boolean which are completely similar to any other programming languages which we use in this daily life followed by that we have hive data models so these are the basic data models which we use in hive that we basically create databases and store our data in the form of tables and sometimes we also need partitions we will discuss each one of these data models in our demo ahead so we'll first create databases and inside databases we will be creating tables inside which we will be storing data in the form of rows and columns and along with that partitions partitions uh, they are like advanced way of storing data like if you have just imagine you are in a school say standard one and inside standard one you have sections a b c d so partition is like you're getting partitions for section a section b section c and section d you're storing different different students in different different sections so that when you're querying for a particular data 
for example say you're searching for a kid called sam and you have the section of his class s b so you just don't have to just search for sam in all the four sections you can just directly go into section b and call in sam and you'll get access to him that's how partitions work followed by partitions we have buckets so similar to partitions even buckets work in the same way let's understand each one of these in much better way through a practical demo after data models we shall understand about hype operators so what are operators operators are any other operators that we use in normal programming languages such as arithmetic operators logical operators we shall also go through some examples based on arithmetic and logical operators in hive in the hive demo we will use some arithmetic operations as well as logical operations on the data which we have stored in the form of tables in hive we shall go through a brief look on that as well so before we get started let's have a brief look on the csv files that i have created for today's demo these are the small csv files that i've personally created using ms excel and i've saved them as dot csv files I've made the CSV files to be smaller because just to make sure the execution time consumed is as less as possible since we're using Cloudera the execution time might be a little more so it's better we use smaller CSV files so this is my first CSV file which is employee.csv which has employee IDs employee name salary and age similarly we have another employee2.csv file which has the same details along with one more column that is the country column I have included country because we will be using this country column in joins that we will be performing in future followed by that we have the department so here we have department id and department name so we have development department testing product relationship admin and it support similarly we also have student csv this is another csv file that i have created this has id name course and age of the student followed by that we have another csv this is student report.csv which has the reports of a particular student gender authenticity parental education lunch course math score reading score writing score and other so these are the csv files that we will be using in our demo today so now let's quickly begin with our demo so to start hive we shall open a terminal so starting or firing up hive in cloud is really simple you just have to type in hive and enter there you go logging initialized using configuration files and etc the hive cli is deprecated and migration to beeline is recommended and there you go your hive terminal or cli has been started so first let's try to create a database to save time i've already created the document which has all the codes that we will be executing today so this is the particular file which i will be using today so don't worry this file will be uh, linked in the description box below you can use the same file and try executing the same codes in your personal systems just for practice if you feel so so just to save time i've already created uh, the document which has the codes that we are going to execute today so this code or this file will be attached in the description box below you can get access to it and you can also execute the same codes in your own personal system to have a practical experience about this particular hype tutorial so the first thing that we will be doing today is to create a database so I'm going to create the database using SQL type commands which are create database name of the database which is edureka there you go the database has been successfully created so now you can also use the following command to check if your database has been created or not so show databases will help you to find it so there you go you can see the first database which is a default database which will be pre-existing and followed by that you have our own database which we have created now that is edureka so followed by this next we will move ahead and try to create a new table so when you come into tables you need to understand uh, there are two types of tables in hive they are uh, managed tables or internal tables followed by that external tables so what is the difference between these two tables so internal table or managed table is the default table that will be created whenever you try to create a table in hive so for example if you're trying to create a new table say edureka then hive considers that particular table as an internal table by default so when you create an internal table your data is not secured understand this so when you create an internal table your data is not secured in case just imagine you are working with a team and all your team members have access to your hive or hue so the table has been existing in your hive and some random newbie or some random inexperienced guy 
tries to change few things in your table and accidentally he ends up deleting the table so when you delete the table then if the table was created using an internal table code then your data will be erased so that's the disadvantage of using internal tables but in case if you create an external table even if somebody tries to delete your table the table or the data whatever is there will be deleted from their own local system but not from hive so that's the best part of using external tables don't worry we will uh, discuss about internal tables and external tables as well so first we'll try to create an internal table so this particular code is based on internal tables so we are using sql type command here which is create table and the table name is employee and the columns inside our table are uh, id of the employee name of the employee salary and age so row format has been delimited followed by that since this is a csv file so the fields will be terminated by comma and don't forget you have to use semicolon unless you use semicolon your code is not complete so let's fire and enter and see if the table gets created or not yeah the table is created successfully now we shall see the table or let's describe the table so describing the table means you can see what are the columns which are present in your table so to describe a table you can use the keyword describe a name of the table which is employee and don't forget semicolon there you go so your table has the columns id name salary age so those are the four columns which you have included in your particular table employee now let's move ahead and see if this particular table is an internal table or managed table or the other type of table which is the external table so to do that we can just write in describe formatted table name and semicolon there might be a small issue here yeah there is a typing mistake that is described i missed s so there you go we got it so this particular table is managed table as you can see here now let's move ahead and uh, try out external tables let's clear our screen first you can use Control plus l to clear your screen there you go we have a clear screen now now let's try to create an external table creating an external table is completely similar to that of internal table but the only difference is that you need to add in a keyword which is external so this particular keyword is used to create an external table now let's fire and enter and see if the table gets created or not you can see the table got created now let's try to describe the table employee 2 don't forget the semicolon i'm saying this again and again because most of the times we miss semicolon and we will get an error so you can see the table got described and we have the following columns inside our table now let's move ahead and see if this particular table is an external table or a managed table to do so you can type in describe formatted the same code what we have used earlier that is describe formatted name of the table that is employee 2 semicolon don't forget there is some issue again i think i've missed something or maybe a typing error yeah this is a typing error yeah there you go the table type is external table so that's how we create an uh, internal table or manage table and external table so now that we have understood how to create a database and table and the two types of tables that are internal table or manage table followed by that the second type of table that is the external table now let's try to create an external table in a particular location so for that you can use the following code but the only difference is you are specifying the location that is user cloudera at eureka employee edu emp is a file that we will be creating in our hive so let's fire and enter and see it if it's created or not yeah it's successfully created let's go back to hue and see if the following table is created or not so one thing you have to remember is when you fire in a command or if you try to create a table the first folder that will be created is a warehouse so inside hive you have your warehouse and inside warehouse you have all the databases that we have created our first database was the edureka database and after that we have created table which is employee and the second table is employee 2 so this is in the particular location which is user cloud era and the file is employee 2 let's see that this was the file yeah sometimes you will not show it because of network issues you don't have to worry about it you will get back that data 
Now followed by this let us enter into hue again So when you come back into hue if you have to upload a file into hue you can just select this particular option which is plus so selecting this will give you a dialog box which will be something like this and here you can just select any of the files which you want to upload into hue now let me select a student report.csv and select open so there you go upload is in progress so the data file has been successfully uploaded now if you want to access your data file you can just click on that so there you go you have all your data successfully loaded onto hue you can also perform queries on this particular data you can just select query and inside that you just need to select editor and you have various editors over here which is peg impala java spark map reduce shell scoop and we also have hive in here so if you just select hive and there you go you have the editor here you can just type in your commands or queries whatever you have so you have many dictionaries as well you can just select any one of those select and that's how you write queries on the hive terminal now let's not waste much time here and we have a lot to learn so let's continue with the next topics in our today's session now we shall try to edit the tables now we have created the new table that is employee 3 and we have named the columns as id name string salary age and flow now we shall try to make some alterations to our table so the first alteration that we will try to make to our table is to rename our table as emp table you know that our employee table was named as employee 3 now we are trying to rename it to emp table so we are using the keyword alter here so just fire and enter and see if this is possible or not yeah it is possible the name has been changed to emp table now let's try if it's completely changed or clearly changed or not you can just type in describe emp table semicolon if we get the same column names in our description then it should be changed so there you go we can see the same columns here so we have successfully changed the name to emp table now we shall also try to add in some more columns to our table which is emp table so here we'll try to add in a new column that is the surname of string data type so i'm doing that by using the keyword alter followed by that table uh, the table name is emp table and i'm using the keyword add columns and the column name is surname and the data type of that column is string so now let's fire and enter and there you go we have successfully added a new row to our table now let's try to describe our table again and see if the column has been successfully added or not there you go you can see the last row which is the surname that we have added most recently so this is how you can alter the table and you can also change the names of the existing columns let's try to do that one as well now what i'm doing is i'm changing the column name to first name so one of the column name in my table emp table is the name which gives me the names of the employees so since i added the surname i'll change this column name from name to first name so this is the command that i'm using for that operation right now let's fire and enter and see the result yeah the chain has been made let's describe our table don't forget the semicolon there you go you can see that earlier we had name now it's been changed to first name and we also have a surname let's clear our screen so that's all for alterations now we shall move ahead into our next major topic or the data model which is partitioning so we have dealt with the first two data models that are databases and tables so we have learned how to create a database and we have learned how to create a table we have learned how to create internal or managed table and also we have created external table and also we have learned how to create an external table in a particular location in your hive and load data to your table and also how to alterate your tables the column names the name of your table and how to add or delete new columns to your table so far so good and now we shall continue with the next type of data model that is the partitioning as we have discussed earlier about partitioning it's completely similar to a school or a college just imagine that you are in a college and uh, you are in computer science section so 
a college has many branches so maybe computer science mechanical and electronics and communications so imagine your name is harry so if someone comes to your college and if he's looking for harry so there are many harrys in your school so if the person is asking specifically about you that is harry from computer science then can you imagine how simple is this query so you don't have to search for electronics and mechanical you just have to come into the class computer science and search for harry and there you go you're present so that's how partitions work to execute commands or to execute queries on a partition we will create a whole new database here let's start everything from fresh so we'll create a separate database for executing our new data model that is partitioning so i'm creating a new database that is edureka student so there you go the database has been successfully created followed by that let's use this database now to use the database you just need to add in the keyword use and name of the database so let's fire and enter and now we are currently using edureka student database now let's create a table in edureka student database so here i'm creating a normal table that is the managed table so inside my student table i'll be having some basic columns such as id number of the student name of the student what is his age and course so you're not finding course here because i'm going to partition the table based on course so here you can find the course i'm using the keyword partition and on what terms so on the terms of course i'm going to partition students so we have discussed about our students csv file right so here we have our csv file and the courses that this particular institute is offering are hadoop java python and yeah so these are the courses that this particular institute is offering so i'm going to categorize or i'm going to partition these students based on their courses so this is how i'll be partitioning them using this following code so basically the table has all the columns and i'm going to partition the table using course so let's fire and enter and see the execution of this particular code the partition has been done now all we have to do is try to load in our data before that let's try to describe it let's try to see what are the columns present in our particular table student so as you can see uh, the course column is present don't worry the code looks that we have messed out course but we did not miss the course column it is present in the table the only thing is that uh, we have just partitioned it based on the course that we are going to offer now let's try to categorize the students based on their course so you can do that by using the following code we are going to load the data using the command load data local in path so this particular folder that is the student.csv is in my local location so that is a home cloud or desktop student.csv and i'm loading the data present in this particular location into the student which is present in hive right now so i'm going to partition the student based on their course hadoop now let's fire in this command and see the output yeah now you can see some map reduced jobs taking place yeah the data has been successfully loaded let's now refresh our hive you can refresh your hive or hue based on two methods the first one is just clicking refresh button on the url or you can also select a manual refresh so this is the manual refresh and there you go it's done you can see the new database that is the edureka student database that we have right now created and inside that you can see the student table that we have created and there you go we have the file of students based on course hadoop now we will try to add in few more students based on the course java for that all you need to do is just replace the course name with java there you go here we had hadoop course and now here we have java course just fire and enter and you can see the output followed by that we also had another course that is python so let's also execute a code for that there you go python so now we have uploaded student details into our hive and we have also partitioned the using one of our data models that is partition into three categories that are based on hadoop java and python now let's go back to our hue and see if the three categories are done or not yeah we need to refresh that there you go you have successfully refreshed still there is no sign of java and python maybe a manual refresh could help 
yeah the manual refresh has resulted in the two new files which are java and python so you have all the three partitions here hadoop java and python just enter them and you can see the student details and now that we have understood partitioning sorry i forgot to mention we have two types of partitioning which are dynamic partitioning and static partitioning so uh, the static partitioning is in static or manual partitioning it is required to pass the values of partition columns manually by loading the data into the table hence the data file does not contain partition columns you can see that we have sent the partition columns manually for python java and hadoop but when it comes to dynamic partitioning you just need to do it once and all the three files will be automatically configured and the files will be created so now what is um, dynamic partitioning so uh, dynamic partitioning the values of partition columns exist within the table so it is not required to pass the values of partition columns manually now what is this no worry we shall execute the code based on dynamic partitioning and we shall understand this in a much better way now let's clear our screen now let's start fresh again let's try to create a new database for dynamic partitioning and let's start again fresh so here we'll be creating a new database that is edureka student 2 so earlier we created edureka student and now we'll be testing our dynamic partitioning on our new database that is edureka student 2 so there you go the database has been successfully created now we shall use this particular database currently uh, we were in edureka student 1 database now we'll enter into student 2 database so we'll use it now now we are in edureka student 2 now before we start up with dynamic partitioning we have to set high execution to dynamic partition is equals to true because by default the partitions that will be taking place in hive will be static so we need to convert that into dynamic partition by specifying this particular code now we are good to go with dynamic partitioning along with that we need to execute another command which says partition mode would be non strict so uh, by default when you are partitioning using the static partition the partition mode will be strict so now you're specifying it to be non strict now let's execute this so there you go we have executed the two required codes for that now let's create a new table so the name of the table will be edureka student that is edu stud and this will have the same columns which are the id of the student name of the student course age etc now we will try to load in the data from our local path that is home cloud or our desktop student.csv into the table edu stud so the data has been successfully loaded and the size is 267 kb number of files is one now comes the tough part so here we are going to partition so we will be partitioning the table based on the same thing which is the course and we will be separating the data using the comma now let's fire and enter now the table has been separated based on course and now we will be loading the data to this particular table which is the student part so this particular table that we have created based on dynamic partitioning and we are going to partition the data based on course now it's been created so the student part table has been successfully created now the only part remaining is to load the data to this particular table now we will be writing a code so using that code the map reduce will automatically segregate the data members or the students based on their courses so the guys which are in hadoop will be separated guys in java will be separated and loaded into different file and similarly with python now let's see uh, how to do it using the code so there you go we are going to insert into uh, student part partition based on course select id name course age from the table at your so uh, the data will be imported from the table what we have created here that is at eureka student so this particular location has the student.csv file now let's fire and enter and see if it's created or not fine you can see some of the map reduced jobs are getting executed you can see uh, we have three jobs so first one is getting executed we have three because uh, one is for hadoop one is for java and one for python 
So this will take a little time. So this is the reason why I have chosen smaller CSV files. So to save time when you take up the course from at then you can work on real time data so that you get hands on experience from real time and you can get yourself placed in some good companies with the experience what you gain from this particular course. So the stages are been successfully finished and the data has been loaded. Now let's see what are the data is present in the particular table student part. There you go. You have the output executed in here. So these are the data members present in the partition student part. So these are the data members which are separated based on their courses. That is the partition based on their courses that is Hadoop, Java and Python. So now that we have understood dynamic partitioning and uh, static partitioning, we shall move ahead into the last type of data model, which is bucketing. Once after we finish the bucketing, we shall enter into some query functionalities of Hive or query operations which can be performed in Hive. And followed by that, we will also learn some functions which are present in Hive and some of the other things like group by, order by, sort by. And finally, we shall wind up the session with joins which are available in Hive. For now, let's get continued with um, bucketing, the last type of data model present in Hive. So for that, um, let's again start fresh. We shall create a new database for that. Before that, let's go back to um, Hue and check if our partition has been made or not. Let's refresh. Also, let us make a manual refresh. So our database was the Eureka student two database and inside that we have the table that is student part and there you go. You can see the files which are based on the partition. So 22 is for a different course 23 is for a different course and 24 is for a different course and this is the default partition which has all the data members as we discussed earlier. Now let's start with the last data model in hive that is bucket now we have created a new database that is edureka bucket now we shall also create a new table for that before that uh, we need to start with this particular database so we can use the command use edureka bucket now we are in edureka bucket now let's create a new table so the table name will be edureka bucket and it will be containing the id name salary age of the employees the table is created now let's try to load the data so the data file that we will be using is the same one that is the employee.csv so the data has been successfully loaded into the location now comes to the major part that is the bucketing part so to start a bucketing in hive we need to use the command set hive.info start bucketing is equals to true so that's done now we will cluster or classify the data present in this particular file using this particular code. So we will be clustering based on the ID and we will be categorizing them into three different buckets. So let's fire in this command and see if it happens. Yeah, that's successfully done. Now we will override the data using the following command. Now we'll be inserting data into this buckets that we have made that is three buckets and we will override the table using this particular code. There you go. You can see some map reduced jobs to be taken care of now. So one mapper and reducers are three for now. So stage one is getting done. So we should be having three tasks basically. So let's see what's the output. Stage one is finished. The process is finished and data has been successfully inserted. Now let's go back to Hive and check if it's done or not. So before that, let's do a refresh. Now a manual refresh would be much better. There you go. We have our database here, which is Edureka bucket and inside Edureka bucket. We have EMP bucket and that's our data employee.csv. There you go. Now uh, let's move ahead and understand the basic operations we can perform in Hive. So for that, let's start fresh again. Let's create a new database. I'm creating a new database for each and every option or each and every operation that I'm performing in this particular tutorial just to make things or keep things in a sorted manner. So as you can see here in our particular file system, 
I have separated each and everything like I have sorted everything. So for bucketing, I've got a separate database and for partitioning, I've got a separate database and for understanding how to create database and tables, I've got a separate database for that just to keep things arranged and sorted. This looks uh, in a much better way. So now let's discuss about the operations that we could perform in uh, Hive. So I'm creating a new database again for this. So the database would be Hive query language. Now let's use this particular database. This creates a habit of learning things in a better way or it's like a revision for the things what you have performed or learned so far. As you can see the table has been successfully created. Now let's try to add in some data into this particular location. That is employee data. It's been successfully loaded. Now let's try to see what are the details present in this particular file. We can use in the command select star from the table Edureka employee. So there you go. These are the details or information present in the table Edureka employee. Now we shall see what are the functions that we can perform on this particular file. So since we discussed that the mathematical operations and logical operations can be performed on Hive. So let's try to perform an addition operation. So I'm selecting the column salary and as we have seen here, the salaries are 25, 30, 40, 20,000 rupees for every employee. Now let me add in 5,000 more to each and every employee. So I'm adding uh, the value 5,000 by using the addition operation. So let's enter. You can see we have added 5,000. So the first element was 25. Now it's 30. So similarly, all the other employees got 5,000 rupees hike all of a sudden. Now let's try to remove 1000. So to do so all you need to do is uh, replace the addition operation with a subtraction operation that is minus fire and enter and there you go. Each and every employee lost 1000. So the initial amount was 25,000. So removing 1000 from that will result in 24. So this is considering the first initial values. So this is how it's working. Uh, followed by that, let's also perform some logical operations. Let's clear the screen and yeah. Here I'm fetching for the employees who are having a salary equal to or greater than 25,000. So these are the employees which are having the salaries above or equal to 25,000. Uh, similarly, let's execute another one which detects the employees with salaries less than 25,000. So we have got two employees which are having lower salaries, which are Amit and Chaitanya. Fine. So this is how you perform some operations in Hive. So now let's move ahead and understand the functions which you can perform on Hive. So in the same way, let's create a new database again and let's use this particular database that is Hive functions. Now let's create a table in this particular database. So the table is employee function and it's created. Now let's try to load in the data. Yeah, the data has been successfully loaded. And now let's see if the data is correctly loaded or not. Yeah, the data is loaded correctly. Now let's try to apply some functions in this particular data. So the first thing or the first function I'm going to apply would be a square root function where I'll be finding out square root of the salaries of the employees. So there you go. The square root of 25,000 was 158 dot decimal numbers. So this is how you perform some basic functions on your data. Now let's try to find out the maximum salary. So yeah, the job is getting executed. You can see some map reduced jobs here. I think the biggest salary would be from Sanjana. So the maximum salary is 40,000. So this is how it works. Since we are working on cloud era and the system configuration is limited, the execution speed is a bit low. But if you're working in real time, then this process would take like a few seconds and it's done. There you go. You have the value 40,000 as shown here. So 40,000, the employee name is Sanjana is the maximum salary. So that's what we got here. Now let's try to find out the minimum salary. So uh, the minimum salary is 15,000 and who would that be? Yeah, it's Chaitanya with minimum salary 15,000. 
So that's how uh, you do some operations in Hive. Let's execute some more operations such as converting the names of the employees to uppercase. So you can see the employee names are converted to uppercase here. And similarly, let's try to convert to lowercase. So here you can see we have converted them to lowercase. So this is how you learn technology. You need to play with the technology. Then you'll come to know um, the advantages and disadvantages. So you can learn the possible ways where you can make things work out. This is how you do it. Now let's move ahead and understand uh, group by function in Hive. So for that we'll be creating a separate database that is group. Now we will use this particular database that is group. So we'll type in command use group semicolon. Now we'll create a table. So the table has been successfully created. Now we will load data into this particular table. Now we will use the new CSV file, which will be employee2.csv. Now we are using this particular table because we have an additional column in this particular table, which is the country column. Now, as discussed before, we will be grouping the employees based on country. Let's see our data first. So we have countries such as USA, India, UAE. So these are the three countries that we are having in our CSV file. So we will be categorizing the employees based on their countries. So this is the particular command that we will be using. So maybe I made an error while creating the table. I think I gave a wrong table name here. So let's drop our table. So by mistake, I gave different table that is employee order. So to drop a table, you just need to use the keyword drop and it's done. Yeah, the keyword table was missing. So you need to type in drop table and the table name and the table gets dropped. So we were supposed to create a different table that is employee group. So now let's create a new table that is employee group. Employee group has been created. Now let's try to add in data into the employee group. So we have used employee two here because the employee two has another column which is based on country. So the countries that we are having here are India, USA and UAE. So we will be using the group by function here and we will categorize the employees based on their countries. So there you go. You can see some MapReduce jobs getting executed. Yeah, there you go. We have categorized the employees based on their countries that is India, UAE and USA. And the sum of the salary. So the guys working in India and their summation of the salary is 90,000. And similarly, UA is uh, nearly 1,5,000 and USA is 80,000. Now let's also uh, execute a different command based on group by. So here we'll be using group by function and we will categorize based on the country as well as the summation of the salary, which is greater than or equals to 15,000. So it's similar to the previous command. So you can see the data got executed and we got the same output. Now let's move ahead and understand order by and sort by methods. So for that we'll create a new database orders. Now we'll use orders. Now let's create a new table again. So the new table is employee order and the table got created. Now let's load the data into this particular table. By now, I think you have some good practice of how to create a database, how to create a table and how to load data into that particular table. So the data got loaded and now we are going to uh, order the data present in this particular table based on the descending order of their salary. So you're seeing some map reduce jobs going ahead. So here we'll see the employees ordered based on their salaries in descending order. So the highest salary will be at the first place and the lowest salary will be at the last place. Yeah, so we have Sanjana at the first position with 40,000 as the highest salary and she's working for UAE and we have Chaitanya with lowest salary 15,000 working for India. Now let us also execute another command based on uh, sort by. So first we try to execute a command based on order by now. Let's see the same output using sort by. So basically both work in the same way. 
So there you go. We have uh, sorted the records based on descending order of salary. Now that we have uh, learned what are the various operations that can be performed in Hive, that are the arithmetic operations, logical operations, and also some of the functions such as uh, maximum, minimum, group by, order by, sort by. So these are the various operations and functions that you can perform in Hive. Now let's move ahead into the last type of operations that can be performed in Hive. Those are the joins. So for that, let's again create a new database. So here I'll be creating a new database that is a Eureka join. And followed by that, let's use this particular database now. For that, we need to use the keyword use. And there you go. We are in a Eureka join. Now let's create a new table for that. So the table will be EMP join here. You can see that I forgot to mention semicolon. So now the table got created. Now we shall load the data into this particular table. So now I've created the first table that is employee table and I'm loading the employee data into this particular table. Now to perform join operations, we always need two tables. So in this particular database at Eureka join, I've already created the first table that is employee join. Now let's create second table that is the department table, which will be present in the same database. So this particular table is a department table which will be having the entities that are department ID and department name. Now let's load the data of department into this particular table. So the data has been loaded. So you can see the employee2.csv had the columns ID, name, salary, age and country. And similarly the department.csv has the entities which are department ID and department name. So the department IDs are present here and the names are development, testing, product, relationship and admin and IT support. Now we have created both the tables and we have created or we have loaded the data also. Now we have four different joints available in Hive. They are inner joint, left outer joint, right outer joint and full outer joint. Now let's perform the first type of joint which is the inner joint. So in inner joint, we are going to select the employee name and employee department and based on the employee ID and department ID, we are going to perform the join operation. That is the first join in the joint. So you can see some jobs getting executed. So the map reduce task successfully completed. So um, the first set of join has been successfully finished and the output has been generated. Now let's try out the second type of join that is the left outer join. So the only difference is that we are using the keyword left outer join. Now you can see one of the job got started. So you can see the output has been generated as well of the left outer join. Now let's move ahead and understand right outer joint. So for right outer joint, you need to use the keyword right outer join. Fire in the command and you can see um, the jobs getting executed. So you can see the output of right outer join has been successfully executed or displayed. Now let's type in the last uh, join operation that is full outer join. So here I'm using the keyword full outer join fire in the command and you can see it's getting executed. So uh, the output for full outer join has been displayed here. So this is how the join operations are executed in Hive. So we have learned how to create database, how to create table, how to load data and the various data models present in Hive that are the tables, databases, partitions, bucketing. And after that, we have also understood various operations that are the automatic operations, logical operations and functions that can be performed in Hive, such as square root and the summation minimum, maximum. And after that, other operations such as group by, sort by, order by, and also the uh, joints that are possible in uh, Hive, which are inner join, left outer, right outer, and full outer. So each and every operation that could be possibly executed in Hive have been displayed in this particular tutorial and everything is sorted here in the base of databases and you can get all the details about this 
and you'll also get the code that I have used in the description box below and you can try it out and also if you're looking for an online certification and training based on big data Hadoop then you can check out the link in the description box below and during the training you'll get to have real-time hands-on experience with real-time data you will learn a lot of things in the training and so far so good now we shall also discuss some of the limitations of Hive so Apache Hive limitations so Hive is not capable of handling real-time data Hive is capable of batch processing. If you have to work with real-time data, then you have to go with real-time tools such as Spark and Kafka. So it's like Hive will actually take in the data. For example, imagine you're working on Twitter and you have one lakh comments on a particular post. So if you had to process those one lakh comments, you'll have to first load all those comments into Hive. Then you need to process it. So while you're loading the data from Twitter to Hive, you may also get a few more comments that you will be missed out. So it's not preferable for real time. Hive is preferable for only batch mode processing. So followed by that, uh, it is not designed for online transaction processing. So online transaction processing is something which only works in real time. So Hive cannot support real time processing. So last but not the least, Hive queries contain high latency. Yeah, Hive queries take a longer time to process. As you've seen, I've taken a smaller CSV file and the time consumed to process such a small CSV file was taking so long. So yeah, Hive queries contain high latency. So these are the few important noticeable limitations of Hive. So with this, we have come to an end of this particular tutorial. If you have any queries regarding this tutorial or if you require code that we have executed, in this particular tutorial then uh, you can write us down in the comment section below and we will respond to you as soon as possible so till then wish you all a very happy learning and uh, thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning